everybody, welcome to Daisy Lane Design. My name is Allison and today I'm going to show you how to thread your sewing machine. I'm assuming if you're here today that you are brand new and, be and a beginner sewer or have sewn before but have always had somebody thread your machine for you. It can seem a little intimidating to get started with something like this, but with um, a little bit of guidance and some know-how and some tips and tricks, it is an easy process and will have you off and sewing before you know it. To get started, I just want to tell you the things that you're going to need to have in front of you in order to make this the most productive tutorial for you. Obviously, you need your machine. It should come with an electrical cord, which I already have plugged into my wall behind me, and a foot pedal and cord, <laughs> which you will insert. Mine happens to be on the back, right there in the back of your machine. And then you can place your foot pedal on the floor, since it is for your foot. You will also need a spool of all-purpose thread, an empty bobbin, which should come with your machine, a pair of scissors, a piece of scrap fabric to practice sewing once you have everything loaded to make sure that you've done it properly, and your machine's operation manual. And then some of the newer machines also come with a quick load guide or a quick threading guide and that's helpful to have on hand too because it's just a picture tutorial of everything that we're going to do today. So if you have those things handy and can grab them. If you're working with a machine that is not your own or um, perhaps you've had for a while and you no longer can find the guides, most user's manuals can be found online just by looking at your sewing machine's model number and searching for it online and you should be able to pick up an online version of the sewer's guide. So once you've gathered your materials we're ready to begin and we're going to move in a little bit closer to the machine to give you a bird's eye view of what's going on as we wind a bobbin and thread the machine. Once you have your foot plugged in and your machine plugged in, step one in the process would then be to turn your machine on. If everything's plugged in correctly um, and you have a digital machine, you'll see the light will kick on, the, the needle will move back and forth, you'll kind of get that little noise that you heard when I turned the machine on. Um, but that just lets us know that what the machine's on, we're ready to go, and we will begin. I have to confess that <laughs> I had to run this through a couple of times in my head because I do all these parts without thinking, um, and so I... <laughs> started doing them and had to think to myself, wait a second, what's the next step? But, um, but we're ready now, so here we go. All right, let me just take you through the items on the top of the machine here. We're going to be dealing with these parts here primarily, and I just want to name them for you so that you know what I'm talking about. So this guy, this tall guy here is your spool pin. This is where your spool of the thread will sit. This is your thread guide and also your bobbin um, tension button. This is your bobbin winder and the bobbin winder stopper. When the bobbin is full, this guy helps the bobbin winder to stop spinning. These are pretty universal. I want to say universal across the board. They will look slightly different depending on what machine you have. Sometimes the spool pin lays horizontally. My machine is a brother, so um, most brother machines the pin lies um, vertically and actually when it comes out of the box it might be in this down position, probably will be in that down position. So if you're looking at your machine wondering why is her spool pin taller than mine, <laughs> it's just because you need to lift yours out to its upright and it'll click to its upright position. If you're referring to your quick start guide, you'll note which way your thread should be coming off of your spool. My quick start guide shows me that if I stick my thread on the spool, the thread coming off the spool should be in the front, not the back of the spool. So I have that in the correct position. And then if I pull the thread out over here to the thread guide, um, I will notice actually that there are also some diagrams on the top of the machine which help me with all of the steps in case I do wind up losing my paperwork, will help me with all the steps of how I navigate 
winding a bobbin. Um, these diagrams are handy and here for your use as well. So on this machine, you're going to wind your thread around this tension button and you'll do this for whichever model. It might be different depending on which, which uh, sewing machine you have, but you do need to wind your thread in one way or another around this tension button at the top of the thread guide. Sometimes they stand alone on the top of the machine, but it just looks like a little silver button on the top of your machine, somewhere on this top edge here. You want to make sure that the thread slides underneath the button and catches. Like right now, there's no pull or tension on my thread. It just spins, spins, spins. But if I catch the thread in between the button and the thread guide, now when I pull on the thread, it has a little bit more tug, a little bit more grip. So I know that that is underneath and snug there, which will make winding the bobbin spool more even and more uniform. Next, I will grab my bobbin. Your machine should come with one, if not two, empty bobbins. If you happen to be without them, they've been lost or misplaced or they're all wound um, and in use already, refer to your user's guide to make sure that you purchase the right types of bobbins. Each company has its own preference for size and whether it's gonna be a straight across or curved top and bottom. And the size, size does matter. <laughs> So make sure that your bobbin size is the correct one for your machine so that you don't break it um, or have it too small and flopping around in there which will cause problems with your seams when you're sewing. You want to put that bobbin down on the bobbin spool winding pin and you'll click it down into place and there will again be another diagram for how to wind your bobbin. Some machines will have you push the thread from in between the two discs to the outside top of the bobbin and then put it down on the spool pin or on the uh, bobbin winding pin. My machine has you putting this, the bobbin on the bobbin winding pin first, working from behind the bobbin pin, wrapping around a few times so that it doesn't unwind on itself and then while holding that tail sliding the bobbin winding pin from left to right which will engage the machine to let it know that instead of sewing right now we're going to be winding that bobbin and then this model also happens to have a thread cutter down below so if I just pull it through the little notch at the bottom of my bobbin winding pin it'll cut the thread for us and get rid of that. This little stopper here acts as friction upon the bobbin as it winds and as the bobbin winds you'll see it fill in with with uh, thread coming off the spool and then when it's full enough it'll hit against this stopper and it'll stop it from spinning. So I'm going to use my presser foot down below and I'm going to start winding my bobbin. Gave a little jump there. So this will continue to wind until the bobbin gets full enough that the thread starts pushing up against the bobbin winding stopper. And once that does, you'll notice that the bobbin won't spin as evenly. My spool is jumping around because it's getting close to being done. So I'm just gonna put my hand here so it's not making as much noise. But as this gets full, it won't spin as smoothly and it'll start kind of tick, 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 ticking. Just like that and that's when you know that you can stop. So the thread is right up against the bobbin spool um, stopper. It so will stop. And now all we need to do is cut the line between the spool thread and the bobbin thread so that we can remove the bobbin. To remove the bobbin, you're just gonna slide the bobbin winding 
pin back away from the stopper and lift the bobbin off the pin. So this is an example of a well-wound bobbin. You'll see that it's all even all the way throughout and there's not any wibble or wobble in the threads showing on um, the bobbin itself. There is a photograph in your user's guide, or at least there is in my user's guide, where you have a well round bobbin, well, I keep saying round, well wound bobbin, and a poorly wound bobbin, and you can see that the poorly wound bobbin has lots of loose. Uh, spots and wiggles in the thread and that will just cause problems um, with your bobbin as you're trying to sew and really cannot be used at all. If that winds up happening, you need to restart winding your bobbin from the beginning. And it happens from time to time. Uh, sometimes the thread is not guided properly through this back button, this tension button back here, or it gets caught up underneath for one reason or another. So even though this feels kind of like an automatic practice, it is best practice to keep an eye on what's happening over here. Even in my demonstration, my spool was jumping around a little bit, so just giving it a stabling finger, keeping an eye, making sure that things aren't going awry before you get your bobbin wound fully and then checking to make sure that it looks nicely and evenly done before you move on is key. We're going to stop the camera at this point and move things around to the front of the machine so that we can talk about loading the bobbin in the bobbin house and threading the top portion of your machine. Be right back. Now it's time to load our freshly wound bobbin. To this point, most machines are more or less the same in terms of winding a bobbin, there are a couple of things that are different and you have to follow along in your book to make sure that you're following, you know, following their directions carefully. But at this point, there are two major differences in sewing machines. You will either have a top loaded bobbin or a front loaded bobbin. This machine happens to be a top loaded bobbin and I'm going to take you through the steps of loading that bobbin in a second. But at the end of the video, we're also going to include a front loading bobbin video so that you can see what that looks like and make sure that you have that properly loaded as well. So for the top loading bobbin, again we have our handy reference over here to the side. You want to make sure that you first have your bobbin in the correct position. Our diagram shows us that I want to have the bobbin in place with the thread coming off the left hand side. It looks to me like the letter P and that helps me remember that I have my bobbin in the correct position before I ever try to put it into its bobbin house. Step one would be to find this little door lever release here on the right hand side and you're just going to pull it to the right and the bobbin house door will pop up. You can grab that and remove it. And then inserting the bobbin is just a matter of dropping it down into the bobbin house just as you have it sitting there. Once you drop it down and give the thread a tug, you will see that the bobbin kind of bounces around and spins freely. And that's because we haven't engaged the tension yet in the bobbin house. On the diagram that we have on our machine, the red line will show you the directionality of the thread and where it needs to be threaded through or guided through in order to engage the tension. And it's simply a matter of guiding the thread underneath this backwards J plastic piece here. So I'm just going to hold on to my bobbin and slide the thread underneath that plastic J and around all the way to the side here. Now when I give the thread a tug, I can feel that grab or that grip that we've talked about before and it's a smooth pull and I know that the tension has been engaged by the bobbin house. Down here below, there is a little cutter that you can use if you like. However, I like keeping the tail of my bobbin thread long. It makes it easier when you draw up the bobbin thread in the next step. It'll make it easier to catch and get out of your way. So cut it if you like, but I like to keep mine long. Lastly, before we move on to threading the top of your machine, you're going to replace your bobbin house door by sticking this notched tab underneath that silver spot there and clicking it back in place. Now we're ready to thread the top of our machine. 
On our way up from the bobbin house to the top of the machine, there are obviously some parts in here that we need to talk about a little bit before we go on to, to thread the top of the machine. The first is, well, this is where all the sewing happens. Um, this is this little teethy part here. They're called feed dogs. And the feed dogs are what feed your fabric through the machine as you're sewing. They kind of grip the fabric and slide it through at um, the pace that you set on your machine. This is your presser foot. It's what holds pressure on the fabric so that they can um, be grabbed by the feed dogs. And the presser foot is raised and lowered with this lever back here. Some machines have it to the side, some machines have it in the back, but it's a lever that raises and lowers that presser foot. And the, when the presser foot is down, it comes down on the feed dogs. So you always wanna make sure that you lower your presser foot in a controlled motion rather than slamming it down on the feed dogs that can uh, damage the feed dogs there. So once the presser foot is down, that tells the machine that you're ready to sew and it engages the tension on the top portion of your machine, which happens right in here. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, so when you're ready to thread the needle, you actually want to make sure that the presser foot is up so it releases the tension and you can get the thread through all the mechanism of the top of the machine. You also want to make sure that the needle is in the upright position and my machine has a button that raises and lowers the needle to its highest position. If your machine does not have a button like this you're going to need to do this part with your hand wheel. It's on the side of the machine and just like we're going to add some information about a front loading bobbin at the end of this video I'll also include some video that shows you about turning your hand wheel because there is a specific direction that the hand wheel should be turned to help keep your machine in best working order and not mess with its timing at all. So look for that at the end if you don't have um, the button that raises your needle to its highest position. We're ready to move on to threading the top of the machine. Alright you guys, we are nearly there. The last step is to thread the top of our machine. And it is a five step process. And I'm going to take you through one step at a time. What's convenient is that my machine has handy dandy guides that they're all numbered so that I can follow them along as I go. And we'll pause at each one so that the camera can focus on what we're doing. So the thread should still be on the spool from when we were winding our bobbin and hit is here. And step one is to put the thread through the thread guide. There is a diagram right in front of the thread guides that shows you which direction your thread should pass through the thread guide. And it's going to come from behind the thread guide and catch in that notch right there at the front. So that's step one of threading. And then you're just going to draw the thread down through this first groove in your machine. See if there's a number two right there on the front. And you're going to bring a thread all the way down to the bottom of that groove and pass it along and around where it says number three. Number three is where the tension discs live for your machine. And that is what engages, just like we engage the tension on the bobbin, this is what engages the tension on the top thread of the machine. Once you've passed by number three, you're going to bring the thread back up to the uptake lever and you're going to wind it from right around to left and it will catch itself in there and draw the needle or the thread back down towards number five. Number five is actually referring to this bar right here right in front of your needle and we want to get the thread behind this bar right here. The easiest way to do it is to hold it taut between your fingers and just slide the thread behind that bar. And that just guides it close to the needle so that you're ready to poke it through the eye of the needle. This machine does come equipped with quote unquote, an easy threader, and I don't like it at all. So I just thread my machine, I thread the needle from front to back, poking the thread right through, and making sure that the thread does not loop around my needle. 
like that. Once the needle is threaded, you're going to hold the tail of the needle thread in your hand and while you're holding it towards the front of the machine, you need to lower your needle one full rotation down and back up into your machine. On my machine, I have these buttons across the front that one of them is for lowering and raising the needle. So I would simply push my needle lowering button and then push it one more time and that will raise my needle and that draws up the bobbin thread that we were talking about before. See this extra little loop that we have here? That's my bobbin thread and I would just grab the loop that's there and draw it all the way to the top of the machine so that both the ends of my spool thread and my bobbin thread are at are on the top of the, the sewing pleat. And then I would just pass them to the back underneath the foot and I'm ready to sew. So you have your bobbin in the bobbin house, you have your needle threaded with the top thread, the only thing left to do now is to practice sewing. I have some black fabric here, just a single layer of fabric, and I just want to show you what the stitches look like and what the machine sounds like um, under normal circumstances. It's good to know what things should look like and sound like so that if you encounter weird squeals or pulls or any other noises that shouldn't be there, you know to stop and try to assess what's going on and fix things. Um, so all you have to do once you're ready to sew is to find a piece of fabric, stick it in between the feed dogs and the foot, lower the foot carefully onto the feed dogs, and use your foot pedal to start stitching. I'm keeping my eye right here on the edge of my foot. And that ensures that my stitches are nice and straight. And before you try to make any projects or do anything fancy with your machine, you should take some time to just work on sewing straight stitches. And then you can move on to other things. When I'm done or have gone as far as I'd like to go, I'll raise my presser foot, just like I lowered it, make sure my needle is in its upright position, and then I'll be able to pull out my work from the machine and cut my threads and show you what that looks like. As promised, we're gonna take a look at a different machine that has a front loading bobbin. This is a completely different brand. It's a Singer, um, pretty basic Singer machine in, as opposed to the Brother we've been looking at. And the bobbin house is not visible from the top because it is a front loading bobbin instead of a side loading bobbin. And the first step would be to remove this big piece of plastic that's in the front of the machine. And there's a little place to catch your hand behind and you just pull it to the side. Incidentally, this is where the extra tools are kept um, in case you're looking for those or they're not easily, easily found. And then you have a little door that you would just flip down and there is your bobbin house. Now it's the same mechanism that holds the top loading bobbin but instead of laying flat this way it's turned up and on its side. There is a little lever here that swings open. You just pull on it and then the whole case comes out. And This is where the bobbin is going to sit. So on the machine I showed you Prior to this, this was sitting like so. So we have our wound bobbin and we're going to insert it into the bobbin house. And there are directions in the book, but just as before, we were talking about holding the bobbin like a pea. And then in this case, you wanna turn it so that the tail of thread is coming off the top and towards the front. 
and then just set it in to the little holder and there's a very small notch back here you feed the thread through the notch in front and pull it down until it releases into this bigger area here and that is the tent that will engage the tension if we just sat it in there it would spin really quickly, but since we're feeding it through that little notch and along this line, that uh, engages the tension for the bobbin. And now we have that nice grip on the thread that we saw in the other model. To insert this guy back into his little house, you wanna make sure that this hook piece is upright that the needle is raised to the highest position and the little lever that you pulled to get it out you will have it pulled out once again and you just simply insert it back onto the pin catch the hook between the two notches that are there at the top and release the lever and then you can close the door and either slide this door back on or leave it off either or is fine but don't worry about the tail we'll draw that up when we draw up our top uh, thread and then you'll be all set to sew. So that's loading a front bobbin. So if your machine does not have a button that raises and lowers the needle for you then you're going to have to do it by hand and as promised I said that I would show you what that looks like. This is the hand wheel. There is a hand wheel on the side of every sewing machine. Uh, you just happen to use it more when you don't have a uh, digital machine or a computerized machine. So there you'll see there's a groove here. There's also a raised ridge on the top of the machine. When those two things are lined up, it means your needle is at the highest point. And so when you're ready to draw the bobbin thread up to the top of the machine, you will turn this wheel in a counterclockwise motion. It always has to go counterclockwise, one full revolution. Turning the wheel in the opposite direction can damage your machine, so you don't want to do that. As you're turning the wheel, the needle is engaging, it's going up and down, go all the way down into the machine and then back up to the top. And when you reach the top, where that groove and that ridge meet, your needle is back up at the top and you can draw the, sh the bottom thread up just like you did before. So that's it. Thank you for joining me today on this tutorial of learning how to sew and learning to thread your machine. I hope that you found the information useful and helpful regardless of which machine you own or use. And if you have, I would ask that you would subscribe or leave me a comment down below so that I know that you visited today. And if you're ready to take the next step, then look for Learn to Sew Part 2 where we'll make your first project. Thanks so much you guys, have a great day and take care, bye.